Our mini lecture today is on module 23, Forgetting and Memory Construction. Yes, we are human beings and we forget. Sometimes we don't know where we put our keys. Sometimes we don't know where we put our phones. Some people more than others. But this is what, today we're going to delve into why we do that and what occurs and some of the theories behind it. So first off, we need to look at the information processing model of encoding, storage, and retrieval. Encode is getting information into the memory system. Storage is retaining of that. And retrieval, the process of getting encoded information out of a memory storage. Encoding, storage, and retrieval. Again, encoding, storage, and retrieval. Getting information into the memory, being able to store it and retain it, and then finally pulling it out of our memory. That's a main part of trying to help with forgetting in memory construction. So why do some people not encode things into their memory and do it? First off, some, for one, it may not be important to them. Two, it's not necessary to know the information. And three, your brain's ability to encode decreases over time. So let's take a look at this. Which penny is correct? Now, do not go into your pocket and look at a penny. You've got five seconds to figure out which one it is. Five, four, three, two, one. All right. It's A, okay? That is the correct penny. Many people actually don't know that. Some people do, okay? Hermie Ibbinghaus is a German philosopher who pioneered memory studies and trying to understand why people forget and why people remember. What he comes up with is the retention curve, okay, or the Ibbinghaus curve. When we first hear it, the day since learning the information, you retain 60% of it to begin with. Then it does a huge drop after a day then it goes down a little bit more this is the forgetting curve we don't necessarily always remember the things that are out there and it's very hard unless we have a conscious repetition of information right where you're constantly like for example in a class constantly reviewing constantly hearing constantly doing that is what the forgetting and memory curve is now Permastore memory is when you have long-term memories that are especially resistant to forgetting and are likely to last a lifetime. Right? These are things that occur, like for example, a wedding, the birth of a child, graduation. You will run. I can close my eyes and picture my graduation ceremonies. I can picture funerals, things like that. That's in my memory. It's going to last me a lifetime. I also, big events like September 11th, I can tell you exactly where I was, at what time and everything, when it occurred. Some people who were in who were in the 1960s can remember where they were when President Kennedy was killed. And the people who lived during the time of, night, of World War II can tell you when Pearl Harbor happened, exactly where they were when these things occurred. Interference is a problem that you have that gets in the way of remembering certain things. You've got proactive and retroactive interference. And these are things, problems that get in the way of trying to remember and accurately remember things. And a lot of times this actually can occur when you get older. So proactive interference is when an older memory disrupts the recall of a newer memory. So you have something that was older in your mind, but you can't remember something new. An example, this guy right here, a locker combination. Welcome back to school. When I was in school, we had the lockers did not have locks on them. We did not provide our own locks. They already had locks on there. And every locker had a different combination. And we used our lockers. So we, when I was in middle school, we moved from 6th grade hall to the 7th grade hall to the 8th grade hall. And then in high school, our lockers did not stay with us the whole year. We were assigned lockers and we used them, but we got different lockers at different times and everything. And the biggest thing when we had our lockers, you would have to memorize a new combination. This guy here is dealing with proactive interference because he's having a hard time remembering the new combination versus the old one. Retroactive interference when more recent memory disrupts the recall of an older memory. For example, this girl right here is looking through a yearbook in junior year homecoming dance. She may have just had a homecoming dance from her senior year, but is confusing it with her junior year. Okay, that's retroactive, going back, and then also times you see this, and your mind, you, your story may change over time with how things were in the sequence of events. Okay, especially if you are in a high school class that is celebrating your 50th year reunion, yeah, you're going to have some issues recalling some things. Dr. Elizabeth Loftus is a psychologist at the University of California, Irving, who came up with the misinformation effect. 
how a subject's memories vary based on the wording of a question. Okay. Now, the misinformation effect is in, sometimes incorporates misleading information to a memory of an event. An eyewitness testimony, the way you word a question can change an answer. For example, here, we've got a car crash. The actual incident is on the left, a memory is on the right. The question about how fast were the cars going when they smashed into each other. Smash in our heads, we picture a big, huge um, problem, and we actually pretty much figure it might be faster than it would, um, and we create a situation like this. If you use the word, how fast were the cars going when they bumped in each other, you would see more what is actually on the left side. That's the misinformation effect, using different words to be able to get different answers. And then your memories. How accurate are your memories? Was the memory encoded? Has the memory decayed? Is there interfering with memory? Is there reason not to remember? And are there falsely constructed memory details? All this deals with um, forgetting and memory construction. And that's our lecture today on Module 23, Forgetting and Memory Construction.